Well, wow. the good thing about this is we have backup feature matches for this exact reason. You can see the cameras going on in the background there. So we're going to move across to our backup feature match nice, where it looks like we've got William Gill versus uh, Eric Rose. Gagari Yagmoff, let's go, versus Goya Blink. So this is going to be wow. an interesting one. Goya Blink is kind of a new one that's got, uh, I've actually weirdly even seen it and an uptick quite a lot. People like, you know, cheating in things like Attraxa uh, versus Yag Gagori Yagmoff. This is, this is my favorite deck. This is my pet deck in modern currently. Um, we're going to be joining him at game number one, but Yagmoff has gained a new tool. Do you know what that tool is? Um, in the in the newest set? Yep, in the newest set in Wilds of a Brain. Oh, I don't think I do. Was was the was the was the toy? I'm trying to remember the full name of it, but it's the, it's the cauldron. Oh, it's, uh, Agathis, Agathis uh, Soul Cauldron. Yeah, Agathis Cauldron. Thank you very much, new whacking up in the chat for you there. A lot of text attached to that, but. In this deck, because you've got a lot of your creatures, plus one counters is kind of the name of the game, what we need to do. And Grist being a creature in all uh, areas besides when it's on the battlefield, you could potentially turn like a lot of your creatures into Grist. And it's here. It's yeah. going to have some really cool interactions. Let's see if it maybe uh, pays off here. There it is on the screen. Look at this production, ladies and gentlemen. Well done, Anu. Take a pat on the back, my friend. As we're going to see grief into uh, ditching grief with mana open for potentially something like an ephemerate. Shows a hand yep. of Bowmaster, Yagmoth, Cooling, and two land. What do you like taking here? Uh, I would be tempted to just take the like Yagmoth and <laughs> Bowmasters. Well, it's going to be the whole hand, right? Like if, if he wants to, this ephemerate is going to go on to. Um, is it, it's not suspend, yeah. is it? What's what's the uh, rebound? It's, it's rebound. Talk to me about rebound and how that works, because that's not one that people tend to see very often. Yeah, so you, when you play a spell with rebound, you put it into exile, and then on the upcoming upkeep, you can play it again from exile. Um, and so you basically get the, what, two uses of a single card. Now, some, some players, to, in order to remember it, put the rebound card instead of into the exile on top of their library face up to as like a like a tracker uh, but if you play at a rel that's not regular or casual i don't suggest doing so because that's I, I i think it's literally illegal because you're putting a card that shouldn't be on top on top all right jeez why are you, why are you <laughs> jeez so obviously I, you know, I i know it from uh in fact because we used to have it on one of our cards in Infects, and I'll give five points to anybody in chat that can name it the rebound card that used to be played in Infects back in the day. Can I name it? Can I name it? No, no, no. You, oh, no. you, you, okay. you must know it. You're the expert role right now. You definitely know. But we do get to see Colgen come down. Fat Town, well done. You just gained yourself five points. Distortion Strike was the card. That's now let's see if we can get this uh, Colgen back up on the screen. Now it's on the battlefield. We can actually talk through all the different modes yeah, that this card can bring. This is kind of a okay. you know, two-drop. When it, you know, you can spend mana uh, through its can of multiple colors to activate creatures. Yep, we know about that. Creatures you control with plus one, plus one counters on them have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Agatha Soul of Cauldron. Tap it, exile target card from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled this way, pit a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. So if we tap this and give the young wolf a plus one, plus one counter, but when we exile the Yagmoth, that young wolf could now be, uh, you know, potentially a Yagwa, but doesn't really do many more extra things than that. But like Grist is the big one where, you know, you can start taking out pit and loyalty counters on it and start having armies of insects. This is kind of where the, the spice and the flavor everyone's kind of excited about this for in the Yagwa community. It's going to so be. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised you didn't force me to explain the card. That was very nice of you, you know? That, when it comes to Yagmoth, I kind of, I, I, I just get excited. You know what I mean? I like it. it I think this is what, we haven't had many new cards printed for Yagmoth because it's a toolbox deck. We kind of play a lot of one-offs. This is, this is really helps our, our strategy for removal even more so than we used to have with just our creatures being undying. Yeah. But here comes Endurance. Love the main deck Endurances in the list. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, yeah, like no basically in those Golgari Yogmoth decks, if you play a single creature, it's as if you played like nine copies, right? Because you've mm -hmm. got so many ways to find them, both with tutors and the raw card draw. So I really, really like effects like a, at least a single endurance to have access to, especially against those living end decks that have been floating around. 
So this this is actually interesting last turn. So we had the option over on William's side to let them double block with the Endurance and the Young Wolf. And then we could have used the Leyline Binding on the Endurance and killed the Young Wolf. Yeah, the trigger comes back as a 2-2, but, you know, potentially in future turns that might be relevant. Um, decided that, that the free damage to the face is more relevant because, remember, Yagwaf can only really combo if it has a, a, enough life to do that with. So, um, you know, go, trying to, you know, learning that route and going... That's the plan that they want to take. They'd rather, instead of getting value, go for the, go for to the face. We're going to draw two, discard two, gain two life. Two Bowmasters in hand, two Solitudes in hand. Yeah, but two... we're missing land drops. Uh, so the, the, the two, two? So the other two is Gorios and the three mana card draw spell, Instant Speed. I forgot the name now. It's the domain card draw. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what you're on about. Um, I'll see if I can look that up while you keep talking. I um, mean, yeah, I think I think Shadow Prophecy, Shadow Prophecy, yeah, that one. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, so it's it's a stacked hand, but no lands, and then Eric says, yeah, okay, just four mana, the Ogmuth go, and the clock, three three power every turn, he can draw a card off of Young Wolf, then potentially draw something else, reset the Young Wolf, draw again. Yeah, this is huge, but, you know, we do know about the Solitudes in hand, and this is where it's huge. I think we'll see in response, yep. Yeah. In response, I'd like to sacrifice this. Wolf Bowmaster in response. Right, so they're not, now they're trying to figure out the timing, because it really depends what William actually wants to achieve with these Bowmasters. Because the 1-1 one -one is immediately in the graveyard, and it's never going to come back as a 1-1. One -one. Um, so I guess he wants a trigger of the draw. Yeah, it's, it's going to be the draw step that you, you, or the, the extra draw you're going to get from Yagmoth. Yagmoth, remember, does have the ability to pay one life, sacrifice a creature up to target one creature, gets minus one, minus one uh, counter pit on it. And then it also has the uh, two black discard proliferate. Choosing to use the ability here while the solitude's on the stack, trying to get yourself one card deeper. Now a lot of triggers are kind of happening. Yeah, so he has to draw two cards in total, and that's Blood Artist's land, so that's not very exciting. But if there is Agatha of the top, it will be much more exciting, actually. You could play Blood Artist, immediately put a counter on it. Um, in this particular matchup, Agatha's Soul Cauldron is also a hate card against Gorio. Did... I think I must have missed that. Did we sack the Young Wolf twice? So we, we sacked, sacked it again as a 1-1 one, one, and then as a 2-2, two, two, yeah. Oh, we did do that. Okay, that's an yeah, interesting to, line to, of play. To kill, to kill the opposing uh, Bowmaster. The, the Bowmaster, yeah. It's just, it's just interesting. Interesting line. It makes sense, well, but then there's arguments for and uh, against, I guess. But this Bowmaster taking out the Blood Artist is uh, going to be pretty rough. Also, also, you'd rather be left with one more card than a 2-2, two, two, I think. Uh, certainly that's what Eric thinks, but now a ton of lands. From William's perspective, though, he never knows when there is a code of calling lurking. Uh, okay, so we are meddling a little bit more, gain to life. Yeah, this, this life is uh, pretty big. I actually played against this. So remember, on the Kugar Yagma side, they do play Bowmasters. So them drawing all these cards on the other side, they've got to think, you're, you've got to be playing around them at some point, that potentially my opponent could also have Bowmasters. Would have obviously fired it off long before now. I think I might have fetched up a Arbor there in the you know, end of turn, or at least to block the Bowmaster, but maybe they don't have them in the list, because when this is closed deck list, we don't have them currently. Yeah, and so William is really low on resources as well, but it doesn't seem to matter. These, um, these card spells, Meddling, uh, a yeah. faithful mending. Oh, faithful mending. It always leaves you down a card, right? Because you're spending a card to draw two, discard two. And he's done it twice, I believe. So he's putting himself down on resources, but up on card selection. But now, Shadow Prophecy. Normally, nice. though, right? Like, normally that's the case. But in, you know, in this deck, they want cards in their graveyard for oh, yeah, yeah. things like so, Gory's Vengeance. Yeah. So it's playing into the game. Like, normally not, not amazing, but for that card there that you see attracts her. She comes down, she restocks the hand, as well as being a 7-7 seven, seven Flying Lifelink, Vigilance, Death Touch, and all this other crazy text that's on that card. But 
This is only game one, remember, ladies and gentlemen. It is a best of three match. And Eric, I imagine after sideboard, we'll have something along the lines of four endurances, oh. maybe some uh, purse, depending on what he's brought this weekend, because it is a closed deck, this tournament. 366 players all battling out to get their share of $20,000. That there is enough for the scoop from Eric. He's like, cool, yeah, I can't deal with an attractor coming back. Not on this battlefield, not one so far behind. So we do get to go to sideboarding. I would say just, so, you know, I, I, I could take the Yagmore side. I'm pretty sure endurances are some number in the main, some some in the board, and I believe that they'll be coming in. But it's what else? What else do we have in this list we're getting a good look at it just as you are now copy effect kite like that go for the throat maybe fatal pushes there's a couple of endurances and a scavenger news at the back that's a uh, scavenger news is one that kind of sees play sometimes doesn't see play i think he's gonna be super happy that he's got it in his in his uh 75 here there is two What's other cards that? i I know El you're about it's to ask El Elven me. Chorus. I think it's Elven yeah. Chorus. I was about to say, the Elvis Chorus is like one of the newer cards that Yagmoth has picked up. And uh, I tried it last weekend. I didn't actually ever get a chance to, to cast it. But very good in like grindy matchups, right? Do you know what this card does off the top of your head? Um, I do not know of, of the top, but I've, I'm a professional, so I've got it ready on my screen. Okay, cool. And Go for it. <laughs> so it's basically an experimental frenzy. When you can, can uh, when you get to take a look at your top card of your library, and you can cast creature spells off the top, and all of your creatures can add mana of any color. So you can go through your deck very very fast, and mm -hmm. at a moment where you would break, right? Because maybe there is a land on of the top, you can fetch it away because in modern you play fetch lands, or you can play Cause of Calling, Eldritch Evolution to actually reshuffle, or on top of that you can use Yogmoth to draw that non-creature of the top and then keep playing. So it's basically like, okay, I'll say it, like Bolas' Citadel for Yogmoth. It, yeah, it's very I said good it. in Yogmoth, yeah. Okay, you like, that's a bold claim. I'm glad you said it, because that means chat aren't going to shout at me. But no, I think it's, you know, you're right in that assumption. It really does that sort of powerful effect, especially when it gets going. It's good when you're in a top deck battle. It's good when you've got creatures, because a lot of the creatures on paper, if you look at them, the Lighted Halfling, Gilded Goose, Young Wolf, uh, you know, Orcish Bowmaster, Strangle Root guys, Wall of Roots. These aren't amazing cards to finish the game down, but if they're all now mana dorks, you can start firing things off the top of your deck, then yeah, you're going to start turning and burning to hit those key cards like Yagmoth, Shieldred, Grist, these things that you, you you really need to do. That's our faces on the screen for anybody that's you know, just tuning in. Welcome. My name is Will Hall, and I'm joined by Skura, better known as Islands in front. And this is the last round. This is round number four of eight being brought to you today. Then before we pass it off, to Dom and Tim, who are waiting in the whims for this game to be over before we pass it to them. But first, before that, we do need this game number two to happen. And we see Eric starting off with an Ignable Hierarch. That's one that's kind of fallen out of, um, out of uh, favor in the Yagmoth community recently, mainly because it has the toughness of 0-1. This is... They're not both playing at, you know, super high speed. We have sped the video up for everybody watching it. We're going at one and a half times speed because we obviously want to bring you all the matchup in its entirety before we do get past the uh, round off and we head to round number five. So with just a strangle as a follow-up, does get the Exalted Trigger, so it does have a little bit of a clock. I've won many games with the uh, Exalt Trigger on a strangle root Geist. Fetch land. Are we going to see Yagmoth here? Yeah, that would be a really decent curve, actually. Mana mm -hmm. Dork into Geist into turn through Yagmoth. It doesn't seem like it. No, okay. just going to play. Well, that's oh. the Cauldron. Okay. Okay. This is going to be fun talking through what Cauldron does if we start getting activated at one and a half times speed. Thanks, Anu, for setting yeah. this one up for us. Let's go. But there it is on the screen for you. This is kind of the, one of the new cards from Wilds of a Drain. And that is the, you know, that's the talking point of this weekend. It is now legal in modern. In every format that you can play Wilds of a Drain, which is, I believe, every format, you can play it in. And this is one of the cards popping up in modern. We've seen things like up the Beanstalk in the hands of a couple of other players this weekend. Now it is the Cauldron's time to shine and will it. As we see a Leyland's Binding come down and get rid of the key combo piece. And because it's actually exiled with a binding, it's going to be very hard for us to get that back outside of something like the Seiju. So combo element semi-turned off right now. But beatdown plan is in full effect here. Never free damage I mean, coming yeah. across. 
and I can see Shadow Prophecy being lined up, but Shadow Prophecy also deals you damage. So it's Ooh. getting really tricky for William. Here comes down Yagmoth. Great draw off the top. I'm not sure if I would have played that first and then maybe sacrificed the uh, uh, the guys to get an extra point of damage in, but like without looking at the map and how it all works out, I'm not entirely sure. But it looks like we've got a response. We're going to draw a couple of cards, or at least like you know, look at the top of cards, put a couple of them in our, into our hands. I see a couple of ephemerates. I think what we're looking for is the solitude. Oh, that is a solitude ephemerate. That is like the worst nightmare when your Yagmoth player is seeing exile effects on the other side of the battlefield. Um, and yeah, but, but you're much you're much less scared of exile effects if Yagmoth is already on the battlefield, right? Because oh yes, especially you can where you've got every exile effect. I mean, I'm surprised we're not firing, firing it off now and stopping this sort of like refill of our of our hand because now this is creatures in the graveyard. Here's young boy. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh, maybe that wasn't a solitude I saw. Oh, it was a hallowed moonlight. Oh, so basically, okay. So, Will, yeah, Will, walk us through the juggling of the dice. So we're tr basically trying to find... Well, no, no, actually, we can't combo because the, um, the blood ice is underneath the Leyland's Binding. What, what normally would happen is you'd keep going until you get endurances. You then do the endurances to get the extra green cards you need. Then you would cord and go find the Blood Ice. But because Blood Ice is now underneath a Ley Lines Binding, we need to find a way of getting it back out of there. And without having two mana to use potentially a Besaidu, hoping we've got more than this one copy that's in the battlefield, to deal with it, it's actually, uh, uh, this is like a more of a value play that we're going. So let me give you another interesting idea here. What if you discarded, you cleaned up, strategically something like we do now, Yogmuth, so that you can exile it with Cauldron and then grant its abilities to something else. Uh, yeah, well, we uh, he actually had the option of doing that, passing the turn of putting a Grist into the graveyard. But uh, And also it looks like they did have the option to do Solitude, but was very patient with it. Let them restock their hand, knowing that they couldn't combo off. It's going to be interesting to see how this pans out, but, you know, Infemorate with Solitudes on the battlefield is pretty crazy. Here we go. Our first activation, the Cauldron, targeting the young, uh, the Yagmoth. It's going to hit another oh. Infemorate. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. It's not good content, though, but it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a really solid play. And this, this is the smart thing here, right? Taking the creature with a plus one, plus one counter. See a scavenging move in the graveyard. So now we're going to put a plus one, plus one camera on the Geist. That now gains the ability of Yargmoth. And then the Femorate goes crazy. It then flickers <sighs> back. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then so if, Eric, if Eric plays like Eldritch Evolution of Code of Calling, there is that Hallowed Moonlight. So I think William will be taking it down to an O. Yeah. It's, it's, this, this is all the cards you do not want to see if you're a Yargmoth player. Let, you don't want to see Solitude, you don't want to see Ephemerates, you don't want to see Hallowed Moonlight, and then you definitely don't want to see your opponent potentially playing things like Atraxa uh, uh, and Hand Disruptions. Pretty rough oh, matchup. Here comes a Canopy that's, Garden. That's a doozy. That's a doozy. So why do people play that? It's more just another option, you know, another creature on the battlefield for Yargmoth. It's another sack, way to be able to sack uh, things to it. In this instant, we could potentially put a plus one, plus one counter onto it. Uh, I think we've got a bit of life discrepancy here of like, you know, how much life did I gain? How much life have I used? Players just going a bit of back and forth. Because, um, you know, look at William. His life total is only at five. There's nothing stopping this plant token with a 1-1 one, one ca uh, counter on it. Being able to actually get those last points of damage through, especially with uh, options of top decking uh, things like a, a Stranger Root Geist. Here comes a couple of Delighted Halflings. Here comes a uh, Vizier. Now, this is one that we play a lot of one ofs. Very good when you've got a Yagmoth on the battlefield. So, actually, it would have been great if we. Wow. If... Okay, well, that's not yeah, actually. Because it, cause it's got the plus one ability of Yagmoth, because Yagmoth's already exiled, isn't it? It gains that ability anyway. So now, every time we get a, um, a snake token, this is like a, a mini combo. Wow. Eric, Eric has played that perfectly. Oh, my God. Jeez, this is all going off. So, hello, Moonlight. That's going to stop things returning from the graveyard. Or is it spells that aren't cast this turn, I think? Something like that, it says. But there's nothing stopping if, us doing it in the upkeep. Yeah, that's true. That's true, yeah. 
So he's just waiting until that happens. He does that before the rebound comes off. And, and so because he, yeah. Yeah, like really even good. if an Atraxa comes down, we can kill the Atraxa that way. It's not great. I'm not saying that, you know, we're, we're in a favorable position here, but we're giving us, yeah, we're wow. giving us the chance to take it down. And Williams said, I got nothing. I got nothing for you. We're going to do a game number three. Looked like we were dead and out of it there on Eric Rose's side. Manages to get it back. We just seen the power of cauldron there, ladies and gentlemen. How good did yeah. that look? Wow. That, I, was a, that was really impressive. Zero one plant tokens. Buy them now. They're two OP. Jeez, that was great. Okay, we get to get a game number three. And everyone knows Will loves a game number three, especially when it is in the modern format and it involves the deck Yargmoth versus Goya's Blink. But they are going to be on the play now. They're going to be able to get that crazy, potentially grief. It's ripped so many cards out of your hand kind of turn. But then that, we look like we're dead and out of it then. Realistically, highlight that that, that that matchup was decided on the Strangroot Geist being able to get their life total so low, I believe. Would you agree? Yeah, that, that gonna... put a lot of that put a lot of pressure on William, but I will I will still give the the trophy to to the cauldron. Okay. That pulled so much weight in the late game, and it provided so much content for us. That was clippable. That was clippable. Yeah, maybe I need to pick a few of them up for my deck. Are we interested to see how many Eric's playing? Like, I thought maybe we, we play it as a one of, but uh, you know, potentially we might need to pick up a few more. I might have to go in there. Uh... Go to my favorite LGS and try and pick a few more of them up as we do see both players taking Mulligans down. Who do you think Mulligan favors here in both these two decks? I think I, I'd rather be on the Golgari Yogmuth side because Gario's Blink seems to play on low resources, right? Like with all the pitch spells, with all the you know, um, faithful mendings. So it really wants to assemble a very specific set of cards. And when it goes down, it cannot recoup the card advantage that well. Although, although on the immediate flip side and the other end of the spectrum, it can win off of you know just a couple of cards by ditching a Traxa and bringing it back. But that only refers to those really, really good practice draws. Okay, it looks like we got keeps from both players. Six cards, one and a half times speed. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, and they're not playing crazy fast. It is us. Oh, I've been told in my ear, apparently it's normal now. We are going to see it at normal speed, so I don't have to talk like I'm at a, a racetrack trying to keep up with horses going crazy. But no turn one play for either player. And then just a pass to turn back again from William, passing it back to uh, Eric Rose, who's going to find himself an old, uh, original, overgrown tomb. Got to love it. Do you have a choice in uh, Shocklands, or is it just whatever you own? Would you own like OG? Oh, the, the, oh the, the, certainly not. Certainly not. Oh, I always play the original edition. So I've got okay. all the OG Shocklands. But there will be a an exception to this rule because with the Galaxy I don't know ones? what this no 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 no. With I think Modern Horizons 3 will be getting retro old frame shocklands. And oh. this will be my upgrade. Yep. I already have all old border fetches blue fetches i already play beta basics so adding you know retro chocolates to that mix is going to be great so stronger route guys comes down then we're going to fetch over in williams turn do you know uh who worked on modern horizons 3 i don't none other than mason clark you see there in the bottom left of your screen there offering coaching he is supporting this stream ladies and gentlemen getting a new to these scg events so he can bring you this amazing paper coverage he's offering coaching if you were you know you want to up your game in magic the gathering that is the man to go to i believe there's some sort of command in chat i don't remember what it was it might be exclamation mark coaching and that will uh, get up all the details you need to know about it as we are going to see a grief over on the side for William, he's going to get a chance to look at the hand, and he sees a heck of a hand. That is a land, Grist, Yagmoth, Blood Iced, and a Might. What do you think you choose here? Wow. Okay, that's uh, maybe a Grist, because it's, it's really annoying. Like, when it gets got... Oh, okay. Okay, probably Grist and Yagmoth, right? Just take the top end, the actual good spells. Oh, oh no. not really. Because we're planning on, the, on this ephemerate landing next turn. They can't oh, cast Yagmoth yeah. this turn. It makes sense. Yeah, I like it. I respect true, true, it. True. Yeah, it makes sense. Now, yeah, I really sure. wish there was some cauldron of the top. A cauldron of the top would be so sick. Oh, yeah. my God. It would be so good. That would be so good. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, you do need to support everybody that's supporting these streams. If we don't support them, they can't support these streams. We don't get live paper magic to watch. And that is what we all want at the end of the day. These, you know, this, we can agree. 
this game in itself has been amazing. We would not be able to see this if it wasn't for people supporting this game. If you don't like ads, well, there's an easy way around it. It is September on Twitch, 30% off all your subscriptions. So if you don't like ads while you're watching an eight round modern tournament today, add in another eight rounds tomorrow, followed by a cut to top 12, then it's easy for you. All you need to do is click that subscribe button. If you have Amazon Prime, you get one free. Just Google the words, how do I link my Twitch account to my Amazon Prime account? And it's like two clicks, bam, sorted, done. And then we get to support this channel even more. No play for William, no attack for William, just passing the turn back to Eric Rose. Top decking, decides to fetch. Hoping for a cauldron or a grist. Let's yeah, see how... Thinning the deck. Here comes up an old swamp. And Eric has got so many good top decks here. Please oh, be a Ooh, oh, that's... That's, one that's a good that one. That is... Wow. Down to Gris resolves. Uh, this... So sorry, you down ticking? Yeah, down ticking means you then the trigger goes on the stack to sacrifice a creature. This is where you can kill creatures in response before the one is chosen. What you sacrifice. Well, so this activates. No, no. Okay, so now now they're yeah. explaining the, the actual wording and how the rules work. So I sacrifice. So I don't. You just need a creature to sacrifice. Yeah. All right. So yeah, it makes sense taking the one that can deal with the binding. Now this gets sacrificed. It does have haste, which is obviously ideal. So you get to get in there for four points damage. William going down to nine life. So only t potentially two to three turns away. That is a Fable the Mirror Breaker coming down. The powerful free drop saga that we've seen. It's going to bring along with it a Goblin Shaman token on level one. I don't think I like what Will did because you're getting the second chapter next turn, right? I don't think I would have played that Godless Shrine because you don't really need that many lands and you would get, you know, one card deeper into the deck. And even if you need mana, you've got the Goblin Shaman potentially to attack. So I think I would have held that back in hand and ditched it to the, the Fable. I mean, tr chat is asking about the Cauldron and how it works with Grist. Do you know? So, I actually have to have someone explain this to me, but do you know this? Do you, can you explain that to people? Well, what, what I do know is that it works as intended, so you actually can exile a, a Grist as a creature from the graveyard because Grist is a creature everywhere other than the board, and so you get to exile it, and then the, your creature, like Young Wolf, with a counter, can indeed use the loyalty abilities. Correct. It, obviously, it can't Thank use the, the tick down ones because it has no loyalty it can only use the tick up one until it gains enough loyalty to then use the tick down ones just like any planeswalker but yeah it's uh it's a crazy interaction that we're going to start seeing in more more in modern i believe here comes an attack for two treasure token made double block from acros which we can hear from the obviously the amazing uh mics that we now have down for all the all the players one thing you can agree on chat and and, and uh skewer is the coverage is always getting better on this channel every single time it goes live there's something something's happened or been improved a new camera a new mic a new graphic a new trivia a new wordle new casters because you know let's be honest everyone's kind of improving as we go along it's going to be uh it, it's just it's just mental it's just so good that one person can do this off their own back because of the love and the passion of this game. And we do need to support them, ladies and gentlemen. That's an endurance off the top. Playing our land drop for turn. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Oh, that was a crisp sound of a card flicked <laughs> into the graveyard. Oh, I like that. That was uh, ASMR that right there for everybody listening at home. Okay, so I think William has got uh, Solitude in hand. So we've got Solitude yep. plus the draw step. We're flipping Fable, and that flipped Fable can get really scary with that Solitude. I don't think we're going to see this Fable stay around much longer. I think that Grist is probably going to end it, uh, take, you know, have a, a way of dealing with it very shortly. Solitude. But okay. We're just main phasing it. Okay. I suppose, I suppose, yeah, we can actually attack the Gris down this way, right? Oh, that's that, that's a heads-up play. Nice, nice uh, play from William. Uh, what's the thing that could get round this? I suppose a Court of Cooling or a Bowmaster. 
uh, or odds endurance. and chances, or endurance oh. that we know about that big. Um, yeah, this exchange is so like William made a really heads up play, but just walked straight into Eric's uh, trap that was you know set up all along. So, but it didn't, didn't even attack with the bowmaster, so we wouldn't have got Gris off the battlefield anyway. We would have just stopped the tick down part of it, but huge draw step. What can we find? Yargmoth would be crazy. Call of Calling would also be an, uh, really good. Eldritch Evolution is decent. It's oh. just a land, I think. I think maybe, yeah. So one thing to know, Evolution go, uh, is dropped quite a lot in these decks, um, like down to one or two copies only to make room for some of the new cards, especially if we're painting things like Cauldron in. <laughs> Chat asking, do I flex on my opponent when I have a gold chain? Do I wear gold chains and flex on my opponent when I play Yagmoth 2? No. No, I do not. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm not that cool. I can't pull off gold chains. Okay. Let's so we've got an attack all in with everything. So what Eric wants is for Solitude to die so it cannot be looped with uh, Reflection, or for Reflection to die so it cannot look with Solitude. Either is fine, and it actually materializes. Uh, much is, to Eric's There's nothing uh, on the other side of the battlefield. You know what I mean? He's got one one card in hand, five land, and a Kiki, which we could deal with if we want to go that route. We've dropped William down to three, so now we Lethal is on the battlefield. It's uh yeah, this position out like is it, this position is tricky. Really, really tricky. And Eric can, can uptick uh, Grist with the sole intention of being able to ultimate it. Yeah, this is uh, this is interesting. The uptick, uh, you know, you've got lines to either. Do you want to uptick? Do you want to downtick? Ley lines, <gasps> binding, and solitude. But Jeez. there is no mana to copy, so you have to go binding on. Oh, ah, that's tricky. That's really tricky. You probably have to like solitude endurance in combat, and then go to, go to like god honest blocks, uh, or even take three actually. Yeah, this is gonna be. This is. Really the, close. The, the timing of this is going to be key. Right? This, this, when do we fight off and what situation and what board state? Because the, the grist at four means that, you know, we, one of the creatures won't stick around, so we can't do the crazy copy effect with the Kiki. Can I have, it's going to be interesting. This, is going to be, you know, this, this game is going to be decided over the next uh, turn or two and potentially over this play, so decide on what happens. If we drew something like a cord, a calling this turn, or a or, or strangle root geist. Okay, well, how does wow. that change them? Oh, this is... In with Strangle the Strangle guys, secretly, the best deck card in the deck. Solitude. Uh, okay. Trigger. So probably Exile Endurance, because it both hits the hardest and is the hardest to actually block. Uh, okay. Although it doesn't have Undying, but yeah. 22. Now go to blocks. We can block, go to one. Then they've got a tick. They're going to take down the Grist anyway, sacrificing the Strangle Root. That's kind of. Oh, uh, yeah. I think these are good blocks. Yeah. You go up to eight. That, that's big. Eight is a lot. And so now you have to down tick, essentially. Kill so Reflection. Okay. Kill Solitude. Okay. This is such a, like, on the, on the knife edge for both these players. Goyers. Oh. Gets back Solitude. Then we can copy Solitude. Oh, my word. We're, we're, still, we're still in this. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. Oh, it's he got a legendary, because... isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry <laughs> to... Yeah. I got excited. I got excited. You did, you did. <laughs> it, w it would be sick. I love underdogs. Uh, I love underdog stories. Uh, okay. Four lines. He just goes, yeah. With both. Shrug, attack with everything. And so now you would like to remove a creature, but then you are keeping Grist on. So you kind of have to bind in the Grist, but then you're yes. just one top deck away from winning or losing. I think you need to bind in in combat, right? Yeah. So then the Grist can't be used next time because we didn't use it pre-combat. Yeah. Or, or we're going to get over the Young Wolf. Okay. Interesting, but that means now we can use the Grist. That's going to tick up. Discard oh! another Let's go. Wow. On and camera. It's a, turn two, it's a two turn clock now. I think William thought it's, it's, it's more turns, but it's a turn to clock. Oh. I wonder if he's playing. Oh, yeah, it's game. Facts are playing. 
That's wow. a awesome field. GG's. What a game. What a game. Oh, this is nuts. Did the, what do we draw for the turn there as well? Yeah, you got it. Oh. Yeah. Go this is unreal. That wow. was a sick game. That was a sick game. Congratulations. Taking it down. Love it when Yagmoth wins, but yeah, getting the double trigger off a of Grist after your opponents just used like a ley line bind because they're worried about a 2 2. It, that, that, that feels nuts. good. That feels good. So, congratulations to them. But that's going to be it for round number four, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be it for myself, Will Hall, better known on the internet as Will Hall EXP, and Ireland's in front, better known as Skura. We've been your European morning team. Thank you very much for tuning in. Please do everything you can to support this stream, support everybody that is supporting this stream. If that's either with a follow, that's either with a subscription, or you want to pay for a subscription because it is September, 30% off all subscriptions this month. You can link your Amazon Prime if you forgot to use Amazon Prime this month. This is the perfect time to use it. Wilds of a Drain is out. Everybody's loving it. We're going to see how much more we can get of that on camera for you all. Remember, and I've got to do it one last time. I'm sorry. The Modern Super League is on this channel Wednesday evenings, depending on where you are in the world. Exclamation mark Super League to get all the information on that. A lot of hard work's gone into that one. Skira, any last words before we go? Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. It's been really exciting. I love Modern. I love watching these games. I love casting these games. Uh, yeah, I love this game. Yeah, sick. Eight rounds of Modern action. Four of them are down. Four more to come with Dom Harvey, Tim Schultz. We're going to pass it back to Anu. See you all on the flip side. Have a great day wherever you are.